Hello everyone and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is episode 12, SQL Server Failover Clustering with Storage Spaces Direct. I am Warner Chavez, SQL Server, MCM and Microsoft Data Platform MVP and I work at Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So the topic for today is going to be mixing SQL Server failover clustering with Storage Spaces Direct. This uh, particular video is part of a larger blog post where I'm doing a step-by-step -step, uh, setup tutorial on how to configure these two technologies inside the Azure Cloud Platform. So check out the blog post as well that goes with this video if you're interested on trying this out on your own. So Storage Spaces Direct is a new feature. It's an evolution of the Storage Spaces concept that was released in Windows Server 2012. Now this is the, um, the new extension of uh, that feature for Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition. And basically what it allows you to do is to pool uh, locally attached storage on several different nodes as one big storage pool, right? So this is basically software-defined storage. And this really allows us to open up some scenarios of using the cloud to do uh, SQL Server failover clustering because we can take virtual disks in the cloud, pool them so that we expose either cluster shared volumes or scale out file servers, and then we can install SQL Server on top of that. So this allows for the first time to work with SQL Server failover clustering in the cloud without having to use third-party tools like, for example, SIOS Data Keeper. Um, and like I mentioned in the blog post, we have the actual step-by-step, -step, but in this short video, I'm just going to show what happens when we have that configuration and we do our failover testing for planned and unplanned uh, downtime for the failovers, all right? So let's go check out those demos. Okay, I'm connecting now to one of the Azure active nodes of the cluster. As we can see here, I'm already connected to the cluster name. It's SQL FCI cluster. If I expand here on the storage and we can go to pools, we'll see I have one cluster pool. This is the pool that I created with Storage Spaces Direct. So we can see here I have a pool that I exposed two virtual disks from the pool. One is going to be the SQL data files, the other is the SQL log files. Under that, it's four physical drives, in this case virtual disks, that are attached to my Azure VMs that are composing this pool. If we go to the disks, we can see as well the cluster sees those uh, storage spaces direct volumes as CSVs. And we can see I have my SQL Server role online and running on SQL FCI node 1. And we can see all the dependencies are online at this point as well. So I'm going to restore this down and I'm going to have it side by side with a connection that I have on Management Studio. So let me just resize this and bring up Management Studio. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you guys how I can connect just fine to the cluster. Right now you see here I just have a simple select statement from uh, the White World Importer Sample Database that you can download off of CodePlex. I'm just going to execute it and we can see it works just fine. I get back my orders that I have on the database connecting through the SQL Server cluster name. It's at SQL FCI. So I'm going to go over and now I'm going to move the SQL node. I'm going to select it and I'm going to say I want to move it to node 2. which is what we would do in case of planned maintenance if we needed to patch or so on. And we can see here now it's starting to take all the different resources offline and starting to online them on the other node as well. Now, if I try right now on Management Studio to run the query again, you guys can see it actually, Management Studio seems to be like retrying uh, under the covers or, or it could be the internal load balancer that's holding uh, the connection at this point. But basically, uh, we can see on the right side of the screen how SQL Server comes online all the resources are now on node number two after we did the failover. And then the interesting part here is that um, if you take a look at the screen here with Management Studio, in just a few seconds, it's actually going to complete the query without uh, giving us a TCP connection error. 
So here we go, the query con completed, and we didn't get a TCP connection error, which is usually what we would expect when we do a failover uh, cluster scenario. So I thought that was really interesting in terms of behavior when we are just running a select statement. It actually seems like the connection um, survives through the failover uh, and just simply uh, completes the query. Once the failover is done, of course, we can just continue querying and the results come back without any problems. At this point, let's do our second test, which is going to be stopping a VM completely and see how SQL Server reacts to that. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is test number two, where I'm going to stop the VM completely. Right now we have our SQL cluster running on SQL FCI node number two. On Management Studio, I have a workload that is going to simply insert one row at a time. It's going to wait five seconds and then keep going uh, pretty much forever there, just inserting one row every five seconds while we test uh, our failover uh, clustering. So I'm just going to execute it. And then we'll be able to see uh, how the different uh, rows start to get inserted. So we can see there one row got inserted. If we wait another five seconds, another one's being inserted, and so on. So we have this active connection inserting one record every five seconds or so. Now I'm going to go into the Azure portal and I'm going to directly stop this FCI node number two from the Azure portal to simulate the loss of a VM completely in Azure. So I'm just going to stop it right there. So you can see the portal is going to take my stop request. And now we're going to take a look here at the failover cluster manager and see what's going to happen to the different SQL resources once the cluster realizes that FCI node 2 has gone completely down. As we can see now, the role of SQL Server has been lost as the FCI node 2 has uh, disappeared because I stopped it on the portal. And now we can see as well how the cluster is starting to recover. And now SQL Server has a status of pending. And the new owner has come up. Now it says SQL FCI node number one. So we can see there how um, the clustering kicks in automatically as we would expect and moves the SQL Server role to node number one. Now SQL Server is uh, actually running. I haven't sped this up in, uh, in the recording, so that's how long it took to do the failover in the case of a full VM loss. And we can see I do get a transport error on the TCP side of Management Studio when we were running the inserts. But once SQL Server is back online, I can just simply restart my workload and we can see that we are back inserting rows without any problem. So the lesson here, of course, is that as all cloud applications, you should definitely have retry logic in your application and you should be able to work out just fine the behavior with a failover cluster instance. Okay, so I hope the demo gave you a good idea of how SQL Server behaves during a failover event when we're working with Storage Spaces Direct. As we saw, Storage Spaces Direct will take care of the data replication, and this is really transparent to SQL Server. As far as SQL Server knows, it's simply just reading and writing off of a clustered shared volume. Uh, we did two failover tests, so you guys were able to see we did the failover testing that we would do, for example, if we were doing like patching, where we gracefully move the instance from one node to the other. Interestingly, in this case, our connection was not even interrupted, probably because of management studio retrying. And then the second one, we were doing a write workload and we simply stopped the VM completely from the portal, uh, simulating the loss of a, the complete loss of a VM. In this scenario, we see how the TCP connection is lost, but we don't lose any data. And as soon as the failover has completed, we are able to reconnect again and continue with our workload. So like I said, check out the blog post that has more information. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for next time.